Hey everybody, this is Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and it's noon Eastern Standard Time and we're excited to have you as we broadcast live in this session called Heat Printing Hacks. So I've prepared for you at least five, and I'm sure we'll get into more, but at least five heat printing hacks that will hopefully uh, be able to help you increase productivity in your business. Uh, some of these are tailored to doing specialty items that only you can do in heat printing, and you'll see how to do those quicker and easier. Uh, some of these are tailored to everyday tasks that you're probably completing in your business if you're using a heat press or even a vinyl cutter uh, in a heat press, which is a common accessory. Uh, as always, we're broadcasting live, so I'd encourage you, if you have any questions uh, throughout the session, uh, chat those in. We'll be on for about 20 or 30 minutes together, depending on how quickly we move. I'm always uh, optimistic on the speed at which we'll move through, but we'll be together for a little while here. Um, and stay on as long as you need to answer questions. So Linda, glad to have you watching from Texas, and it looks like there are several other people joining in now, so make sure you shout out who you are, where you're watching from. We're broadcasting live from Pennsylvania. And so this, uh, at Stalls, is um, an exciting time. We are getting ready to kick off what's called our fiscal year, um, which is where we measure uh, our business year uh, as a company. So we've been doing lots of uh, brainstorming, lots of strategic planning, uh, and we have a lot of new things coming uh, into the second half of this year, uh, especially as we approach uh, 2020. So we'll have some cool products to release to you um, over the coming months. Uh, we'll have new platforms even. You may have heard of Spirit Sale. Uh, if you've watched any of our uh, videos on our Facebook page, we've launched uh, Spirit Sale to our VIP user group, which is a, a group of folks that attended some live sessions uh, in either Atlantic City or in our office in Irving, uh, Texas. Actually, I'm not sure how close that is to you, Linda, but we have an office there uh, in Irving, Texas, in the Dallas metro area. Um, and these folks got on our VIP list by attending our events. So uh, we encourage you to come out, interact with us. We do workshop Wednesdays once a month in all of our regional facilities. Um, so if you're interested in learning in a hands-on environment and getting uh, not just through the computer screen, but together live and in person, uh, we do things here at Stalls TV in Pennsylvania as well. So we'd encourage you to uh, look that up on our website or attend a morning show where we share our schedule every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern. So we have Mark watching from New York. Good to see you, Mark. I know you're a regular viewer of us. Laura, uh, good to see you as well from Iowa. I have Johnny watching from Georgia. And... Kelly from Texas, so two Texans at least on with us today. So heat printing hacks, that's today's topic. Uh, let's get into some of that right away. Uh, some of this may be review if you've watched us, but I think I'll be offer, able to offer somebody, uh, everybody, at least something new. And so when you're working with a heat press and we think of products that you can heat apply, heat transfer vinyl is commonly cited as one of the most popular products that can be applied with a heat press. I'd say the two big ones are screen printed transfers and heat transfer vinyl. Of course, we have our Stalls Transfer Express division that does the trans, uh, screen printed transfers, and we have uh, Stalls, stalls.com, that does heat transfer vinyl. So when you're working with vinyl, one of the pains uh, is the weeding process. And so we've given tips before um, that you should invest in uh, a weeding panel or a heated weeding table, which are two products that we've designed a few years back that we sell that allows you to heat this vinyl when you're weeding to make it easier to peel away the backing. And so this is particularly beneficial if you're working with a hot peel material. If you warm this material, it weeds a lot quicker and we've had reports that you save on average 40 to 70% of the production time. So fashion film is one of our most popular materials. It's a material I have cut here today. We also have glitter flake and the weeding process, just in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, welcome, Christine, watching from London. Cool. Uh, you start to peel it away and weed it. And it's not hard to weed. Uh, you see a little bit of resistance there when you're peeling away the excess as you're uh, working with it. Uh, but what I want to show you is how we can speed that up without having to invest in additional equipment. So we have uh, Mike watching from Canada as well. And so we'll walk over to the heat press. I assume most of you have a heat press if you're on the line here today. And of course, the heat press is hot. And this tip is a really easy one. If your heat press isn't to full capacity, it can be used for more than just heat applying items. It can be used for warming your materials for weeding. And so what I recommend doing is just locking the press down, 
doesn't really matter what temperature it's at. Uh, you're just preheating this bottom platen, which tends to hold the heat pretty well application after application. So I just uh, programmed it for 20 seconds or so to warm this base since I'm walking into a cold platen. We've pressed nothing on here yet, uh, at least within the last hour or so. So I'm going to warm that base, and then I can take a piece of my material down, lay it onto the platen, warm it up, and we'll bring it in close for you here. But you can see that the material peels away a lot easier without the breaking. And so by warming the back of that material, I'm able to just put it on real quickly. See how I'm just touching the plastic so I'm not burning my fingers on the hot bottom surface. It peels off really quick, quickly. Quickie, yeah. It makes weeding uh, very easy. Now usually I don't like to mess around with pulling these centers out too much at the press because I'm worried they'll get around my press and maybe apply accidentally to a garment when they're hanging around the heat here. But that's a really nice uh, and easy way to do it. So that's one hack is weed on your heat press to speed up production. So Now some of you may know that, but maybe you didn't catch something else that I did with this particular design. And uh, using weed borders within the context of the design is going to help you. So what a weed border is, it's when you put a box around your entire design. That way when you're weeding a large piece, all of your designs have individual boxes around those. Uh, that's great. Some people like to do that, especially if they're only cutting one design and there's going to be excess vinyl left that you don't want to peel the film away from the carrier so you don't ruin that piece. You can load in those scraps later. But what I like to do, I like to use the weed border in the context of the design. Uh, and I do this a lot when you have a, a large portion of the design and then some small text. Because here's what happens when you heat that material, especially if you've already purchased a weeding table or a weeding panel from us, and you start to weed, sometimes uh, if you don't have a completely clean cut, those small details want to lift up because they're easily uh, peeled up. And if you get a little hanging uh, area where it's not cut cleanly, that small text or that dot of the eye may peel up. And so really you just can't work as quickly because you're babysitting that stuff and it's tough to do that on a heated surface. So what I like to do is you'd use weed borders within the context of the design. So we'll head back over to the table and weed this out to show you what that looks like. And I'm going to grab the weeding tool and we'll show you here. And we're back. And so it just gives me this little extra area and there's actually a line of text here. And so now the material's cooled down. It's not going to want to lift up, and I'm just weeding the excess away. And so it's a great way to be able to get the benefit of the faster weeding time on your large components, and then uh, not mess up your design by boxing in the small components. Uh, an area that I use this in uh, a fair amount is if you're doing something that's uh, licensed, uh, that has the registered trademark on the text, put a box around that registered trademark, and then come back and uh, clean that up uh, with a weed border just around that piece uh, when it's off the table. If you want to get really crazy um, to get it to hold stickier, uh, throw it in the refrigerator. It helps increase the tack, especially if you're in a hot area like the south uh, this time of year. Throw your designs in the refrigerator, cool it down, and then come and weed those fine details, and it helps. I've heard examples of people throwing it in the freezer. Donnie, and Ter it, or Donnie in, from Mississippi uh, it's probably warm right there, maybe in your production environment. Uh, it could be warm, so that's a, a nice little tip or a hack to help. So, weed on a heated surface, make it easier to peel, encapsulate your small details with a separate weed border, and you start to get all these little pieces uh, floating around the table. Something else I like to do is take a piece of this pressure sensitive, right? After you heat apply it, you're going to have a large piece. Um, just tape a piece of this pressure sensitive down to the table and just imagine this is blank. And when you start to weed these little pieces off, it gives you somewhere to leave those behind so you're not having to have them fly around the table. It's just nice, clean, and leave them behind on the sticky carrier from a scrap piece. Um, so that's just another tip with weeding. Clean that up real quick. Yeah, and I'll trim that away for now because we might apply this later. We'll see how it goes. All right, so those are a couple um, heat printing hacks specifically with working with heat transfer vinyl. Forgot my garbage can today, so we'll make do. All right, another, another area where a lot of businesses tend to struggle, especially if you're new to heat printing, is placement. It's one of the most challenging things, uh, especially for a new heat printer or somebody that's very particular 
on their placement. I don't use uh, placement guides personally. I've been doing this for better part of 17 years. Um, I don't use laser alignment tools that often uh, personally, uh, just because I'm quick and easy at doing this and, and you know, I, I don't ruin that many shirts with, with incorrect placement, but it is a major, major challenge for a lot of people. So we have a design and placement guide that we offer to you, and we're gonna share a link uh, to that now for everybody that's, that's on where you can go and you can download this design and placement guide uh, ebook. Uh, just take a, a moment to jot down that link, or if you have a QR scanner on your phone, you can scan it. Um, this will tell you exactly where that design needs to be on the shirt, right? And so that's half the battle is knowing where to place it. And this guide's gonna help you do that, but that's not really a hack, that's just a, a, a tip book that helps you with that. It's more about, okay, I know it needs to go seven inches down from the top shoulder. I, I know it needs to start three inches down from the collar. How do I make sure I get it there every time, right? You can use a ruler, but when you're heat printing, you wanna keep things quick at the heat press. So you don't wanna be spending a lot of time while you're at the press, um, especially if you're looking to get through that job quickly, um, laying stuff out. If you have jobs backed up, you really want to stage those garments, get them to the heat press ready to go, and that way whoever's working the heat press is just going to press those as quickly as possible. Uh, if you're a small business, saves on the electric bill so you don't have to run it as much. If you're a big business, and make sure you can run all the jobs that are in line uh, to get out for the day. So let's give you a couple different hacks um, around placement. And so one of the ones is I'm visiting uh, larger shops that I've seen several times is the idea of laying out on a table before you get to the press. So this is particularly helpful, especially if you're using a small platen to when you get the shirt on the press. Maybe if it's on a smaller platen, it's, it's tough to see where that left chest goes if you're swapping out platens. Um, some people use this for everything just because they like to see the whole shirt. When you load the heat press, some of the shirt is draping off especially when you get into some larger sizes, it's tough to see in context of the whole shirt. So I know there's um, some different ways to do that. This is one particular way. So what I like to do is, uh, I shouldn't say what I like to do, I don't do this that often, but I've seen it done, <laughs> is uh, have a layout table that would be set up. So if you have table space in your shop, create a layout table. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lay this whole shirt out and you can see the way I've done it, the top of the shirt, so the very top of the collar, slide down slightly, is gonna come straight to the edge of the table, okay? Um, that will be the same for every single shirt I lay out on this table. And you can put, um, once you get a system, you can put like uh, pieces of tape or grid lines to give you placement for your different size shirts, but every shirt's cut a little differently. So I typically like to start by just going off the very top, which is how I load it on the heat press anyways, is pulling it all the way down to the top of the shirt. And then on this particular table size and shirt size, I have, you know, it's small enough to where I can see that there's equal distance on both sides. I'm not gonna get too crazy with measuring everything across. I can see that that's a good distance. If it were a larger shirt, I'd see that we're hanging over equal distance on both sides, kind of like you do at the heat press. Now, something I've done here is I have our laser alignment tool uh, hooked up beside it. You don't necessarily need this. You can, you can do this in other ways, which I'll show you, but this is kind of helpful because I can, set up my line lasers. I can use a double-sided tape under this if this is my permanent layout station to make sure this isn't going to move at all, like a, a carpeting tape. And then I've lined up these two lasers for a perfect left chest application. So I actually took a ruler and I measured, according to the placement guide, seven inches down from top shoulder, right? So I have top shoulder right here. So I created a horizontal line seven inches down that's perpendicular, uh, I'm sorry, that's um, parallel or perpendicular? I'm getting confused here, Joe. Parallel with the top edge of the, the table, um, and that way I know it's straight across, right? We measured that out seven inches here, seven inches here, um, and then I created a line, a centering line, right at the edge of that collar. So if you're working with a crew neck shirt, this is the placement guide, I created that centering line, and what that does is it creates a crosshair that, assuming I have a fairly even size graphic that I can place the graphic there. And so I take my graphic, I have it set up, I'm gonna place it down. I have a nice guide and centering line. Of course, vinyl, this is fashion film, which is also the one I uh, weeded earlier. I saw somebody ask that question. It's sticky, so it holds it to the shirt and I can move it um, off and over to the press. 
lay my next t-shirt down and keep uh, moving on from there. And so that's, that's a nice way. So when you're at the heat press, it allows you to keep going. Now you may say, well, what about the preheat? And that's a fair question. And so um, if you've been following us, you know we release the heated lower platens. And on the heated lower platens, you don't have to pre preheat at all. And you can get rid of scorch marks. So if you happen to already have bought those, that's going to give you a way you don't have to worry about preheating. But a hack to kind of um, mitigate against the risk of not preheating is to preheat that lower platen um, for like 60 seconds before you get started so it starts warm and it's actually preheating your garment, especially as you get into shirt number 10 and 12 and you're really rolling with production. You know that bottom platen uh, gets warm. So this is a, a great way to do that. So uh, layout station helps uh, as a way to do it. And now I'd like to show you um, a simpler method. Let me look to see if there's questions on this before I move actually. All right, so yeah, Sharon says, uh, welcome Sharon, good to see you. Uh, I use the laser alignment to do names on the back of 100 jackets. The job went so much faster and everyone was in the same place. Yeah, that's the advantage of the laser. You can set this up uh, right next to your heat press, which is, is the common way to do it. I'm just showing an extra way to do a layout station in case you want to keep things moving at the press and not doing a lot of alignment there. But either way, the laser alignment tool is uh, great. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. A guide for socks. Deborah, I'm not sure. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to look to see if there's any uh, placement of socks. But let me come back to your question uh, afterwards, see if I can find a resource that'll help you. All right, and Linda says placement. Yeah, that's what everybody says. So um, maybe you don't want to buy a laser alignment. I think it's worth the investment. It's ballpark 350 bucks, so it's not that expensive of a tool. It has four line lasers. But there's other ways uh, to get the job done at the heat press. And so let's head over to the heat press on the close-up cam, and I want to show you that. So I'll speak. Joe just gave me, a, gave me a tip. He saw me heading off of the edge of the, uh, you know, down the river where the waterfall was. And Jenna's peeking in the window, if you could see her over here laughing. Um, so the sample I grabbed out of our demo room to show that was a, a sign vinyl sample, which is why it took so long to get over here because the letters were actually sticking to the shirt. I'm like, what in the heck is going on? And so they're text messaging each other saying, don't heat press it, don't heat press it. It's a pressure sensitive sign vinyl. So crisis averted, I can still show the concept. Um, so back at the heat press, thanks guys. Um, when you're loading your shirt, uh, you've, you've seen us probably show you this. I'm always pulling it up uh, to the top shoulders, how it would hang on somebody that's wearing it. And I always get a feel for kind of where this is. So if you're not placing off of the press, this is usually how you would load it. So um, one tool that I think is really simple and really helpful, doesn't cost hardly any money, just a little bit of time, is creating uh, cardboard templates, we'll call them, uh, for placement and alignment. So I spent just about 10 minutes in advance of this um, working with Bob to talk through some uh, cardboard templates. It took me 10 minutes to create these. And I uh, want to show you exactly how these could be used and, and you can create your own set according to your needs. And so one thing is just placement of the front graphic. So what I like to do is I load the shirt like this and then I grab the top shoulders and I retract it because I don't want that collar up on the press regardless. I want this area as flat as possible. And then what I did here is I have a 16 inch wide piece of cardboard, right? Which fits perfectly across the width of my 16 by 20 platen. Then, of course you could use a ruler, but the advantage here is that the distance down from the collar is exactly three inches. So I've cut this to be a three inch strip from the collar and I just happen to have uh, a two inch strip from the collar with the same thing. I could imagine where you'd have different sizes depending on the placement guide and what it calls out. Um, but when you look at this and you load it, there's a centering line and then basically it creates, and I'll have to bring it close to you, it creates a center line and you can see that center where I've written center uh, down and it doesn't have a number by it, that's my zero point, that's my center of my shirt. And then I've made tick marks every inch off of center. So if I'm doing a six inch graphic, I know the edges of that graphic, if that's the width, are gonna be at the three and the three mark uh, running down from the platen. So it's going to give me a top edge placement where I can put the top of my graphic and it's also going to give me a guide uh, to allow me to place. So let me show you how that would work. So I would drop it onto the press, just basically get it 
registered with the perfectly um, square edges, uh, the rectangular design on the press. I'm going to go dig that fashion film design I did earlier back out. And then I take my design, right, and uh, another little hack, I guess this one just came up, didn't plan for it. Fold your design corner to corner, create a centering line, right, crease it. You can see how I'm folding the edge to edge, so I'm getting a perfect center there. Then I take that crease, I'm going to lay it down, three inches down from the collar, right. Center it, make sure it's straight, and that's going to allow me to pull this out, and boom, I'm in the same spot every time. So really quick, really easy to do. I'll hold that up so you can get a little better look at it. But that gives you a great way. You crease it, align that to the centering line, and you're placing. So that keeps it really simple, just these cardboard templates. Now, um, of course, follow the placement guide that we linked earlier, and we'll pop that link back on the screen for you. But I want to show you that left chest placement and how we may do that using these tools. And so, once again, I'm going to load that shirt all the way down. Right, and keep in mind that the left chest placement is seven inches from the top shoulder, if you remember that. So I'm gonna put this one on so I have my centering mark right here. I'm gonna take right at top shoulder, which is at my four inch section. I'm gonna cross over a little cardboard cutout that I made that's perfectly seven inches, and I get a centering line for my graphic, right? And so then I can take my left chest design I have to grab a new one since the other one was signed vinyl. Right? I just cantilever this up slightly. I'm going to drop that in behind, center it, and I'm ready to go. So same placement every time. Keeps it really simple, really easy with just a couple tools. So hopefully some of you have already realized the benefits of uh, little templates to get the job done uh, quicker and easier. If not, it really helps. It really keeps it easy. That's a very uh, simple um, heat press hack. And how I made it was basically I laid it out on a cutter, cutting board that had like the grid lines and the rulers, and then I just made a 3 inch by 16 inch rectangle, and then I marked the center of that 3 by 16 inch rectangle. That was my zero point, that's my center, right on my platen with how I load my shirt, and then I just did 1 inch increments and numbered those all the way out. So I'll just pull that close one more time so you can kind of see that. So bad with that. So you can see, this is my three inch from collar. I labeled it. I have my centering line on my 16 inch wide piece, and you can see one, two, three, four, et cetera, all the way out. So very quick, uh, very easy to do that. All right, look back here. So, so far we've covered, I don't know, four or five uh, little hacks. We've uh, covered uh, some weeding tips with weeding uh, heated. We've covered using weed borders to control small details. We've talked a little bit, uh, just a little bit ago, about creating a layout station. If you're joining late, know that this is recorded, and once it concludes, which will be in another 10, 15 minutes, it'll replay the whole thing. You can play it back within Facebook. And then we just talked about uh, cardboard templates for placement and the idea of folding your design back to back to create a centering line, which tends to work really well uh, with those templates. The next thing, and this is... Um, I'd venture to say that the reason that heat application fails I would say 80% of the time when we're talking to customers is due to inaccurate pressure. Uh, typically, the pressure is not a product of the heat press applying the pressure, especially if you have a Hotronics, you know you can get a digital readout of the pressure so you know it's accurate, but it's really being able to load that garment correctly and get all of the seams out of your way or all of the seams absorbed into the shirt. So I'd like to give you a, a two, uh, two hacks around uh, pressure, but you need some background knowledge first. So, we have two, a uh, few tools for the job. Of course, it's always best if you can have an interchangeable platen, and on the Hotronics machines, these lower attachments change out, and you can drop in an accurate size for you. Um, but, if you don't have the luxury of being able to afford those platens, but you can at least afford the machines, you're going to really like this hack because these heat printing pillows and print perfect pads uh, can be extremely helpful to your business. So just quick background, a print perfect pad is the same density of the normal pad that's on the base of your heat press, if you own one, uh, from stalls, and you can achieve a light, a medium, or a firm pressure on this pad. So you can do any application, including screen printed transfers with this pad. 
all right? And, and it's gonna have a nice medium to firm density, so the garment's not gonna, um, what do I wanna say, uh, go down in its seams, et cetera, and I'll show you how that works. This heat printing pillow is going to be a low density. It's very squishy. Um, I've even seen uh, sometimes where these flatten out over time and you have to replace them if you're using them a lot, so you wanna keep your pillows uh, fresh. Uh, not only on your bed when you're sleeping, I've got some neck pain today, uh, but also on uh, your heat printing pillows. And so uh, with these particular pillows, the advantage is I can use them on all the heat transfer vinyls. We don't recommend using them with a screen printed transfer because it can cause durability issue because you re can't really achieve a medium to firm pressure that's required. But uh, the advantage of these is uh, sometimes the, the seam uh, can sink directly down in. So let me show you over at the heat press how this works. I'll come back for questions here in a second, so just keep them coming. So, I'll start with the pad. Normally, if I wanted to heat print with the Print Perfect pad, and this is going to be so simple, um, I would load this on, right? Or if you don't have a threadable heat press where you can split the garment, you would just lay it flat. And what you would do is you would place the pad inside of the item with the goal, of course, of raising your print area, right? And lowering uh, the any seams, any zippers, any buttons. So I create this nice raised print area. I have to adjust my pressure on the machine unless you have an air press to get my print flat. So very simple, very easy in that way. The challenge is as you start pressing shirts and loading them on and off, this pad of course has to move. It's a couple extra steps, right? 10 seconds, fumbling with it, depending on the item you're printing to try to get it in. And so, Number one, you should have a quick slip pad protector on your press regardless of what press you have because that makes the shirt a lot easier to slide on and off and install sells those protectors, so does Transfer Express. Here's what I like to do. Peel back the corner of your pad protector when you wanna work with a, a left chest placement and you're doing a run of jobs. Go ahead and slide that pad underneath your protector and seal that protector back over the edge. Now, you need to make sure your protector is not worn out so you're not going to have it ripping or having issues. You replace them at some frequency. But you can see I've locked that pad um, into that placement. So now, when I slide that shirt on and off, whether it's shirt 1 or 100 that I'm printing, it's one less piece I have to worry about. I'm just going to load the shirt on. It gives me a nice area that raises up here. It works exactly the same. It actually softens the edge a little bit, so if you're having issues with scorch marks, it kind of softens the hard edge of the platen and helps to alleviate some of those, and it's just simple. I can slide this on and off as many times as I want, and that placement is never gonna move. And of course, with the new tip that we learned with the cardboard templates, that gives me a great place to load it. Take my cardboard template, seven inches down from the top shoulder, right there, have my placement to center my graphic on. All right, now I wanna show you how it works with a pillow. This might go down as an all-time classic as far as uh, mistakes off camera. You guys probably always wonder if we make mistakes off camera. Yeah, I just dumped out half of my water onto the table. So that was fun. All right, um, the next thing is the pillow, and it's, it's gonna be the same concept. And so with this pillow, if I have a zip up, and this is gonna help you with location too, so uh, what there's right now for like baseball, you see a lot of the button-up jerseys, you see a lot of the faux button-ups where you have to go across that seam. You see things like zip-up hoodies. Um, you see uh, this sort of thing where you wanna get into unique print locations, we show you that. Um, on the hoodie, like down on the pocket or the hood or whatever. The problem is if you just load this onto the press, place your graphic and try to press it, this is, these are major obstructions for even pressure. You don't get even pressure. What happens is your graphic may wash off. Of course, that's an issue. But even if it doesn't wash off because you're one of those that cranks up your pressure as high as you can to try to fight through those seams, then what happens is you tend to scorch up the seams and have some issues, especially when you get into polyfabrics because you've overapplied. And so how we would typically show you to do this is we would show you to try to insert this heat printing pillow into your item, right? And that's real fun. It's not bad, but it just takes some time, right? So that's about how easy it was. But 
you know, every shirt you don't get as lucky and you kind of load it on and go, right? But then after it's heat pressed, that pillow gets a little hot. I got to remove it and keep going. So same concept here. How about locking in that pillow? Going to put it underneath the protector. Just make sure it's in there good. This is the 16 by 20 pillow, but it would work with any size. I kind of like it being the exact size as my platen. And then I'm going to lock it in. You'll even see like some of the edges will bend down over. But basically now I don't have to fumble with it. This whole bladder uh, base of the press is, is inflated. And now same thing. I can just split my garment, load it on. Really have to preheat now to get rid of that moisture, that water I spilled on it. Right? Adjust my pressure back because I've loaded some extra thickness in there. And now it's going to give me the ability to speed up my placement. So rather than having to fumble with it and load half and print it, I can load this design here. Be able to print that location even tight into the seams because the pillow is going to absorb the seams. Um, and then, you know, if I wanted to put another placement on it on this side, I can do it. So one of the benefits of heat printing, of course, is uh, unique placement. And so when you start to have tools that make unique placement easier, it's just going to allow you to make more money. It's going to allow you to merchandise more print locations. It's going to allow you to differentiate the work that you do from everybody else if you have the right tools for the job and understand the right techniques. In this case, a couple little hacks uh, to make your life easier. So this is our uh, glitter flake, by the way, in rose gold and uh, white, rainbow white. And that makes it easy. And so now you're rolling through it and you're getting uh, good quality uh, results. So got a couple little more hacks and tips uh, that I want to show you. One more, actually, uh, but I want to see what kind of questions are coming in. Eddie, what's up from San Diego, sunny San Diego, one of my favorite places in the U.S. I only was there one day, but one day I'll go back for a long time. Uh, is that seven inches the same for shirts? Yeah, so good question, Jim. Uh, he's asking about the seven inches down from top where you pinch top shoulder. So typically on a crew neck shirt, that's definitely the horizontal line that you want to follow. You want to be careful when you get into like scoop neck or v-neck or other types of shirts that, that, that can kind of change the rule. You have to imagine the crew neck and where that would be. Um, as far as the seven inches down, I find it works on most shirts that are adult size in that sort of small to XL range. If you start to get into youth sizes and double XLs, you will have to uh, use some judgment, make some adjustments, but maybe you create yourself a youth template, a, a adult a normal size template, and then maybe like some oversized uh, double X, triple X, et cetera uh, templates. So you may need two or three, but seven inches is a standard for like an adult large shirt. should work on a medium XL. Uh, just fine. All right. And cool. You guys like the pad under the cover. Yeah, Keith, it's so easy, but you just don't think of it until you, until you do, I guess. That's the way it works, right? That's why you watch these things, to get those tips. All right. Last thing, I didn't have a good name for this, um, but when you think of unique location, and this is from personal experience, I had, uh, those of you that follow us in the Heat Press for Profit Facebook group, you know that I uh, do decoration uh, at home for my, one of my customers is my daughter's dance school. And so we do the track jackets. It's a really nice program. This year, we decided to step up the decoration from just glitter and rhinestones to where we used reflective glitter and rhinestones. And the idea around the reflective is uh, these kids are coming out of dance class or out of competitions or whatever. At late hours, there's a lot of traffic uh, in those parking lots. And so we wanted some visibility for the kids as they would come in and out through the parking lot just for a safety reason. And it was kind of cool because we have the high-vis reflect that comes in colors that had that fashion element to it. So I selected a pink reflective for these jackets. Uh, the boys at the school took a silver reflective. Um, we did it up real nice with what you would expect, a left chest name, dancer's name, uh, a nice back design that had bling in the name of the school with rhinestones. Uh, but then we had some like if you caught a side view of somebody walking, the rule with reflective is always hit it on the moving parts, right? And that's where you're going to get the visibility. And so we wanted to do a cuff placement 
um, on those. And so, of course, selling the job, I showed two cuff placements because I want to be able to see both sides of movements. And I just put a little brand logo on the cuff placement. Something unique that you can do with heat printing, it'd be tough to screen print that location, tough to hoop it and embroider the location for most people. Um, but it's a pretty cool application area that you can, uh, that you can decorate with a heat press fairly easy. So, uh, at least I thought. And so, let me find my good sample here. Yeah, let's use this one. So this would be a good similar type shirt. It was a performance polyester jacket, but it could be anything. And what happened is uh, the shirts come typically folded like this and you like want to fold it flat. And when you fold it flat, you have this seam uh, behind here that's going to cause pressure issues when I'm hitting my placement on the top side of the shirt. So normally, if I would have had our lovely can koozie platen or something like that, I would have been able to split these and thread it, but I didn't want to buy a $400 heat press attachment for one job, right? It was going to break the bank and I'd lose my profit on the job. And so what I did after fumbling with it, I said, okay, it's pretty simple, right? We're over at the heat press. Um, I did this exact technique where I put the pillow inside of here because I didn't want to fumble with the pillow. Um, and what I did is I laid it on, right? And the, I have a auto clam on a caddy, so uh, sometimes it's tough to get the garment to kind of hold. So I was laying it on and it was falling off. Right? And I was trying to get the both sleeves uh, and they kept falling off and this is a lot of placements. I wanted to do two at a time. And so, of course, on the Fusion, it's pretty simple, right? You put them up there and you're able to tuck the garment underneath and now I'm pressing two, that back seam is sinking down in. But I didn't have that much luck because they kept falling. And so, the point I wanted to show you is the, the conclusion was really simple. I basically pulled a lunch tray, or you could use your caddy shelves if you have them or anything. This is a music stand. Um, and I would, had trays on both sides. I would lay the garment on the tray to give it some support. Um, the tray was sitting too far down, so I put a cardboard box on the tray, but then it occurred to me, you can just take a stack of t-shirts. Basically, you want to get your loading area level with your, with your press, and that's, you know, a stack of t-shirts work and then you drop your shirt on, get your placement up so it's not gonna fall off. Try to get to the right side here, right there. Same thing on this side, right there. I could do the same thing on this side of the press and now all of a sudden, boom, I'm placing all of my logos and I'm heat applying uh, four sleeves at once or as many as you can fit, uh, speeding up the job to where after you place your graphic, swing it, lock the machine down, and you're pressing. And so that sped up the job tremendously, and it's with a very simple tip. I think it may come out to the wide view just so they can see this. All I did is pull a table, level up with a stack of t-shirts, even with the platen, and that allows me to load uh, multiple sleeves at once for cuff placements uh, and be able to print those. And let's take a look at the finished result here. So you can see that sort of concept. So merchandise every area of this garment. Um, what I really like about this technique, it's an extra print location. Sometimes you can grab an extra $5 out of an extra print location. And the beauty of it is often that logo that's gonna fit in that small area is just the scrap that's running down the side of your vinyl, or it's a design that you can fit within the context of your gang sheet if you're doing screen printed transfers. Those are extra money and for the client, it's extra branding. In this case, it was branding plus uh, visibility. So yeah, you could. there's all kinds of tips. So if you guys have other hacks, Brian's sharing one here. Um, you could put a big rubber band around the platen and then just put the sleeves under. So yeah, plenty of different ways to approach the situation. Actually, my first way uh, failed miserably where I tried some invention with Velcro on it, ended up melting the Velcro, ruining the jacket, and but whatever, you try things and that's how you uh, learn, preferably not on a $80 track jacket though, so try it on something else first. So those are my heat printing hacks. I would encourage you, as you come up with a cool hack, share it. There's no, uh, we all wanna become more efficient. We're all in different areas of the country and can all make money with this idea. We have this great group, which is our heat press for profit group, where you can, there's constantly people sharing tips and tricks like this. 
Uh, that way we can all get better together. So just to review what we covered today, we started with weeding and controlling small text within designs with weed borders. We also talked about the idea of heating up the heat transfer vinyl on your heat press to make weeding quicker. If you're doing a lot of it and your heat press is tied up, get yourself a $70 weeding panel or get yourself the $600 weeding table. It's going to make life easier. Then we talked about making placement simpler by using the laser alignment tool and lining up your graphics off of the press on a layout table to keep your press free and keep your press moving. Especially helpful when you're working with smaller platens and you can't see the whole garment to lay out your graphic. We also talked about the idea of cardboard templates, which is a really inexpensive, really easy solution to make layout quick, layout easier. We talked about the idea of using pillows and pads and encapsulating them underneath the quick slip pad protector on your press to make uh, production efficient with left chest placements or across anything that has seams that you can't get rid of, like uh, the zip up hoodie that we did together. And then lastly, we talked about leveling up your design to be able to do things like unique cuffs so they're not falling off the platen to be able to do multiples at a time. So I would encourage you, uh, we're gonna share links to where some of the stuff is as some of these questions are coming in. Um, I'll make sure I look back at the questions. Let's take a glance right now to make sure there's nothing else before we conclude. Under the excess, yeah, so the quick slip pad protector, the heat printing pillows, the print perfect pads, even thermal tape if your backing's not sticky uh, to lay it out, those are all gonna be under the heat press accessory section on the website. Um, the laser alignment tool, I believe, is under the same area, around the heat press area uh, as well on the website. We'll share links uh, to all of that. All right. And yeah, and, and Jeannie, uh, thank you for picking that up. The seven inches down is the center of the logo for the left chest graphic, not the top or, or the bottom. Um, so that's always important. All right, cool. Thanks for attending. Hopefully you got some tips that can help you in your business, and we'll see you next time here on Stalls TV.